Hello everyone and welcome back to a new Microsoft Flight Sim live stream. I just realized I didn't select the uh, Microsoft Flight Sim sounds. There we go. So, welcome back everyone. Today we are flying the very new and very special in your builds Antonov AN225 Maria or Dream as we would translate it. And yeah, we're doing a flight that this aircraft did in real life as well. It's, it's about one hour and I think 30 minutes. 1 hour 40 minutes, something like that. I think it's 1 hour 30 minutes. Let me check, actually. I just realized I'm not on game capture. I want me to find that out. This one should be more centered. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So, we are flying from the uh, Diego Akena airport in... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that to another airport that is not even on Volanta for whatever reason. Uh, in Bolivia. And yeah, we're looking at about, what was it, 1 hour 22 minutes of flight time. So we are delivering um, something today with the biggest aircraft there is. And yeah, let's get started, I'd say. Uh, I've already done a couple of flights in this aircraft, so I can get familiar with it. And I think I've done a fairly well job with that so far. Because I kind of know how to fly this aircraft now. Although I can't read uh, acrylic, so... <laughs> Guess I made some sort of progress here. Okay. Let's get the APUs ready for startup here. Okay. So the APUs should slowly get, uh, get oh, turned on now. Meanwhile, we can start up all our systems. Got quite a lot of systems to start here. In real life, this aircraft will be flown by six people. Um, yeah, but you can, as you can imagine, this is uh, not going to happen in Microsoft Flight Sim so far. So we need to do this all on ourselves. I mean, taking the, uh, like, what is it called? Taking the work of six people and bringing them down to one person is interesting. But it somehow works in this aircraft, so I don't even know how. It just seems to work. Any of them ready to start now? Nope, they still need their time. All right, there we go. So let's get the um, the nose up in a bit. I still need the GPU power. What was the GPU power again? Crap. There we go. External power. Maybe also the reason why those wouldn't start. Let's restart them. All right. So what we need to do now is uh, get the main door ready. So we need to open everything up. Actually, no. Let you know what? Let's do that on realistic. On realistic speed, not like fast forward stuff. We're doing stuff realistic today, guys. Although this will actually take a while, but I'm fine with that. Uh, anyone ready to start yet? No, let's pretty good them to start anyways, but that uh, doesn't seem to work. So we're just gonna wait for it to start. All right, let's see here. Um, yeah, that door could open a bit, a bit faster, in my opinion. There we go. Everything's opening up here. Would you look at that? Gonna take its time, though. That crit is just mighty, not gonna lie. So, so huge. Alright. So while that is opening up, we can take a look back here. Our APUs are still not sort of up. Interesting. That is interesting. I mean, they should start up any second now, so... Should be fine. That's all the, yeah, engine control, so we don't need to do anything back here right now. We will just need uh, to wait for our harbor door to open up, which will, as I've already said, take a long time. I see, okay. So, I searched for the heading selector a long time. I think what I said, there it is. AP heading bug, okay. That's what I had to search in the last few uh, flights, and then someone told me it is behind the thrust levers. Here it is, there's the heading bug, okay, good to know. That's our heading selector. Did not know that so far. Okay, while that thing is starting up, we're gonna take our not very antenna like Garmin here and get all the stuff done. So let me take it a fly uh, take a look at the fly plan here. Um is it though? There it is. Okay, so we are no 
That does not work. Interesting. Okay, there we go. So, we are starting in Sierra, Charlie, Delta, Alpha. Or Charlie, no. Delta, Alpha. By the way, I have the, um, like, tooltips on, because otherwise I would probably forget what some of the functions are on this aircraft, because as I've already said, I can't read acrylic, and it's kind of hard to, you know, maneuver in an aircraft that is on a completely different language that you don't know shit about. So, yeah, I need those, um, tooltips to kind of help me navigate through the buttons a bit. Just to make it a, li a little less painful, basically. Uh, yes, Bolivia. That was correct. By the way, we will also be looking at uh, some long hauls in the future with this aircraft. So, this is like the first on-stream flight, I guess. I will do, like... First check on stream. Uh, as I've already said, I already did quite some flights, which went all fairly well, actually. Uh, except for one, where I sadly landed next to the runway, because uh, it was like 100 meters of visibility, and it's not a very precise ILS that this fly aircraft can fly, so... Yeah, that was kind of stupid for me to try, but, you know, brought her down somewhat, I guess. At least it didn't kill anybody, hopefully. But yeah, we're definitely going to look at way better weather today. And also a daytime landing, because when I tried that, it was nighttime and like 100 meters visibility, which is like barely 300 feet, so yeah, I'm not going to do that again. Okay, that's already the last waypoint here. Uh, L. There we go. I hope that this aircraft gets uh, some shared carpet in the future as well. Or fairly, uh, in the fairly near future, because flying this aircraft in shared cockpit must be insane. Like when you have all the six people in the cockpit, must be insane. Like insane in a good way. Oops, I want to zoom in here. Okay, we are arriving at SLHI, and the aircraft is going down. It's currently kneeling, we're going to take a look at that as soon as I get this turn in here. There we go. Take a look. There we go. You can very, very slowly see it leaning down. Or kneeling. I think it's called kneeling. Would you look at that? That's incredible. No, it is slowly coming down. You can barely see that, to be honest. Yeah, we got the fly plan in there. Um, let's check for the procedures. Select departure. Okay, we are departing. Machine, welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm number one uh, for now in the queue for free tickets to Hong Kong. Nice one. I mean, that'd be cool flying to Hong Kong. I just opened Steam, didn't I? Didn't mean to do that. Steam, stop. No. Steam, get away. I don't want you right now. There we go. Okay, I need to select my departure real quick. Uh... There we go, low back, one niner, yes, load. Same for arrival or approach and arrival. Oh, okay. That's not a thing, I guess, okay. Good to know, so we will have a direct in. Alright, okay. Hong Kong Air, nice one. Well, good luck with that. If you're with them, and uh, fly to Hong Kong, tell us our walls. Yeah, we need fuel now. So, the aircraft is slowly going to move away from us underneath uh, underneath us here, because, you know, it's kneeling currently. So, we got to wait for that. We're going to load that in, and then we need refueling. 45,000 uh, kilograms. 45,000 tons, that'd be a little heavy. For any people with, um, you know, or is it mistyped? It is spelled correctly. Uh, it means dream in English. Oh, Soviet, actually. Like, it was, you know, a Soviet plane built when the Soviet Union was still around. Okay, we can't precisely load the aircraft, but that will be fine. Would you look at that? Aircraft just kneeling down. Incredible. That's the only uh, bad thing about though uh, about this though. Um, the view doesn't get like pulled down as well. It's just like still centered. So if you kneel the aircraft down, it's just gonna you know uh, go to get away from you when you're in the cockpit. 
Um, uh, still type with a J. Still type with a J. In English as well, I think. And that means a dream, basically. Takes a long time, doesn't it? But you can see it coming closer to the ground. Slowly. Looks a bit like a hydraulic press, doesn't it? This is just incredible, though. Oh, fair enough. Maybe, maybe they change it. Or maybe there are many ways to type that, who knows. And for whatever reason, my sub counter on the bottom left is still not correct. We're 75 subs away from 2000. Not 87 or what that is. Okay, let me change it real quick. Where is the all widgets uh, sub counter or sub goal? What, what is it called? Subscriber goal. That is memory goal. There we go. Subscriber sub sub goal. And this one. Okay, subs. Goal amount 2000 starting 1925, I think we're at. Let's try next month as a goal here. There we go. Now that should be updated. Yep, there we go. This massive knack of just kneeling down. Closing that back up will take its time, I can already tell you. It's just a fan here as well. There we go. So, let's take a look at our departure real quick. We are... Departing, are we departing north or south? We're departing north, which means we will have an initial heading of the runway, which will be 010. That's the first heading we want to fly at. Okay, oh, no, that was way too far, Jesus Christ. Zero. Is it zero on zero? No. That is so. There we go. Whoops. Yeah, that is kind of annoying. Okay, zero on zero is active. Or, not active, but set on standby here. Should be fine. And it's interesting that- wait. Are we taking off runway 19 or not 01? We're taking off 19 or I'm stupid, okay. So, I'm gonna turn that by 180 degrees. Just because Volante doesn't show the depart uh, actual departure, that's what messed me up there, I think. That is close enough, in my opinion. Okay, wow, okay. There we go. Now we just gotta wait for... Uh, Aircraft to yeah, extend its ramp, then we can load the aircraft up with our boiler that we're transporting today. So, configure this. We're gonna load in a boiler. I think it should be this way around. Yep, yeah, that one. That's what we're gonna load in. As soon as the ramp is down. Which is still gonna take some time, I guess. This crit is just massive. Trying to center it. There we go. That's centered. I'm gonna crush the... Yeah, we're probably gonna pro uh, crush a pushback truck here. I doubt that this pushback truck would be able to actually push us, though. I doubt it. Just incredible. Whoops, did not mean to reset the view here. Interesting about interior sounds. Like it just fades over. Is the APU on by the way? Yeah, APUs are on. Probably already both started, yeah, okay, we can close that then. Take a look here. Take a look at that. Fully unfolding the ramp for our uh, cargo that is not uh, packets. That's what we're gonna unload in a bit, and then we're gonna load in the the boiler that we're transporting today. Seven three seven G, welcome to the stream. 
currently uh, waiting for the aircraft to load or to, uh, you know, get all the stuff on board. We don't need logo lights, do we? Raw daylight. Turn the switch on here because, I mean, we're in, uh, which country is that actually? I mean, Argentina? Yeah, we're in, no, in Chile. We're currently in Chile and we're going to fly to Bolivia, so I think it might be a little warmer over here. We'll reset the fans in that way. Uh, yes, I have flown this aircraft before. I've done, I think, three or four flights so far uh, since the release to make sure that I can actually fly this aircraft before I do anything on stream with it. And I think I can only know what I'm doing right now. But look at that, there it is. There's the ramp. So, we are... Well, the ramp is still unfolding, is it? Yeah, it's the ramp still needs some unfolding. Apparently. No, it can't open any further, can it? No, it can. What does it do? Oh, there we go, okay. And then we can finally load in the boiler. Are there any hinges, or is this just literally unfolding itself on singularity? It is unfolding itself from its singularity, that is interesting. No hinges at all. And yeah, rest in peace, uh, rest in peace pushback truck, by the way. Didn't mean to crash out, but it happened. Holy shit, this aircraft is so big. I think we can already load in the cargo, yeah we can. So. That is a cargo loaded in. Uh, should be all applied here. I think we can take some passengers with us because why not? It's looking correct. 140 tons. Jesus Christ. What does a cruising altitude? That's actually a good question right now. Flight briefing 31,000. That's 9,500. Okay, around about 9,500. 9,444 theoretically. It wasn't 9,444? 84, okay. I actually do that then. 9,484. Yeah, 48. 9,448. There we go. I'm gonna put the speed up as well. I'm gonna do about 400 kilometers an hour. Should be fine. 420, some. Wait. What actually would be the uh, speed limit though? Um, lots 250, 460. Okay, we're gonna do 400 for the departure then. You know, flaps and stuff. Actually, let's keep it at 380 so far because I'm not sure about the uh, maximum speeds of the different flap stages. Let's take a look at our freight. Our cargo. There it is. Um. Doesn't seem to be secured in any manner, but I think we're fine with that. There's a big ass industrial boiler, isn't it? Yeah, and there we go. All loaded in. This is still annoying. And we can... I am actually put that on pass now because that really took a long time. We're gonna close the main door again. We don't need the cabin door anymore. We can close that one up. So we're all on board. Let's close the nose door. Or, well, nose, ram, whatever it is. It's not really the door, is it? What is it actually called? It's not a door. I mean, maybe it is. I'm not even sure, to be honest. There it is, slowly pulling itself up. This is on the fast speed already. Okay. There it is coming up. This is just insane. I'm really looking forward to the slide, guys. Hope you guys are as well. By the way, what should today's light goal be? Still need to figure out a light goal. I 
There it is, all steady and back up. All right, so as this is closing up, I think we can pre-plan our pushback. Um, let me see here. Might actually have to pull us to the, the runway, do we? We do. We do need to get pulled to the runway. Let's do that. Pre-plan pushback. Let's pull us to the runway. I'm not gonna text there, I'm gonna get pulled. I think that's what they did in the sliders in real life as well. What is a rat on the text away, by the way? You that before? Um, can't we... Can't we push any further? We can't, okay. Then we just have to take I guess. But how did they do that in real life? They pulled the aircraft, didn't they? I broke the add-on. Shit. This one told me I broke it. Okay, I could reset it. Nice. Can we just push us onto the runway then? I want to do it as realistically as possible, but... Yeah, it's not going to work out. If that works. Never mind. Can't get pushed onto the runway. Not pulled, but pushed. Seems a little interesting to me, but okay. It's to work. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's gonna be a long pushback operation, not gonna lie. We're the longest on this uh, channel so far. Yeah, there we go. The... Yep, yeah, that's all active. If you're active, so we can request the pushback here. This is ground. Stand by. Should be already. Did the Louis lights do anything? No, it's too bright. Okay, fair enough. Could have thought about that. Yeah, now if I G. We should be ready over here. Uh, yeah. We still need to put in the LS frequency and everything as soon as we uh, approach, but we'll have enough time until then. Get everything active for the... Okay, actually no. We don't have to get the engine startup ready yet because we'll have to get pushed to the runway first. The parking brakes are set. You may lift. Because I think in real life they weren't allowed to start the engines until they were all on the runway because of the airport size and stuff. We are cleared for start and push. Yeah, I'm disengaged. Cleared for push start. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. Yeah, we're not going to start the engines because we're not allowed to. Is that the off position? It is. Okay, good to know. Did not know that actually. I guess this might be takeoff then, and the other one might be taxi? Possibly. Not sure. I have to figure that one out. Okay, so this is gonna take its time now. We open the window? We can't, probably. Yeah, we can. We can't. Okay. Bring switch guard. Not gonna touch that. Are there any remotely good views on this aircraft? Is this one is the best? I mean, these aren't too bad either. I love like a nose wheel view where we can just see the aircraft being pushed from the nose wheel. I'm just gonna keep it on this though. Whoops. Although I think those are the APU exhausts, which is, uh, very interesting. I think that's one way to put the APU into an aircraft. Just put them behind the main landing gear, I mean, why not? The views are really not that great, are they? Okay, 
it's going to be long pushback operation. Because we will have to be pushed all this way. It's definitely going to take some time. But I'm fine with that. Okay, it should be all correct up here. Okay, the pressure. We still need to check that, do we? So our current flight is 1012 pressure. 1012. That is 759er. There we go. That's all good. And those are oh, for a second here. Yeah, this is really going to take some time. Okay. In the meantime, I think we can turn on FS Realistic. If I have not FS Realistic, what is it called? Um, if it's LTL Traffic, there we go. I think I want some FS LTL today. I don't even have that installed. Never mind. We're not going to start up any FS LTL Traffic. Thought I had it installed, but apparently I do not. It's kind of a bummer. I actually don't have it installed. Why don't it? I have FS LTL installed? That is pretty interesting, not gonna lie. Well, guess we're not having FS LTL done. I wanted some traffic to look at while, or some possible tra tra traffic to look at while we're being pushed back for the next, I don't know how long time. 10, 15 minutes? No, take a long time. Yeah, this is going to take its time. By the way, the arrival on the overlay will say NA because apparently the airport we're flying to is not on Volanta. Don't know why, but it's just not there. So it's uh, SLHI, so Sierra Lima Hotel India, but apparently that's not on Volanta. And only available with scenery in Microsoft Flight Sim, as far as I'm sure. And uh, yeah, so we won't have that on Volanta or on the top of the overlay, which is quite sad, but you know, can't change it, so. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess we have to live with it. That's a needle, isn't it? Yeah. It's gonna take a long time. Meanwhile, I think we can take a look at the scenery here. That's some pretty good scenery. Actually, the scenery, I mean, it has some details on the billboards there, but look at the terminal. Well, actually, okay, never mind. Well, it's not the greatest. It's fine, though, is it? Yeah, I guess it's fine. Not the best scenery I've ever seen, definitely not. But it's fine. It has some detail. I mean, it's not a really popular airport, apparently, so... I think we should be fine with that scenery. Got some detail. And people as well. Everything around it just looks plain dead. The cargo ships, actually. The ships in general. I think there's a military base as well, isn't it? Yeah, some military uh, hangars over there. I think it's military and commercial on one aircraft air airport, which is pretty interesting. I think not a lot of nations actually have that. Are those action model over here? Uh, no, okay. Well, fair enough. Wait. Interesting gap. We are closer to the runway now than we are to a parking position, so we're more than halfway done with the pushback. And it's taking a long time, so I'm happy about that. Turn up some lights here as well because it's getting dark in real life. That pushback tug is really barely fitting into that aircraft, isn't it? Just look at that. That is a very, very close fit here, isn't it? Like those three to four inches there. Holy shit, that is really close. I mean, the antennas of the pushback truck are probably dead. 
Or are they? Wait, are they? Yeah, they are. And you could probably take those off, or they might just be bendable. And that is pretty interesting. That does look pretty interesting, doesn't it? I mean, it actually barely fits. <laughs> well, or it's close to fitting. Just a few more inches on the left and right there. Then it will be fine. We're getting there. Get some shots in here real quick. Actually, no, not that way. We are just waiting to be pushed onto the runway right now. So for those of you who are joining in, I can see we're currently at 9 viewers, by the way, if you haven't done so already, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel as well if you like my content, and if you don't want to miss anything in the future. And for those of you who don't know right now, we are basically being pushed onto the active runway to start up our engines, because uh, when this flight was done in real life, the aircraft's po uh, the upwards policy was that the Antonov, that is a pretty fast turn, the Antonov was not allowed to start the, uh, its engines up until it was on the runway, so it had to be pulled while we were being pushed because it can't do it any, in out, in any other way. But uh, in real life, they had to pull the aircraft towards the runway, and then they were only allowed to start the engines up on the runway and not taxi on themselves. So that's basically what we're trying to recreate. We're not being pulled, we're being pushed, but that is uh, fair enough. Couldn't do it in any other way because uh, apparently the pushback tool planner uh, doesn't really like pulling aircrafts around, but she only likes pushing aircrafts around. Because it didn't let me plan the uh, turn when we were trying, trying to pull us instead of being pushed. We're getting closer, so we'll be done any minute now. I think that's the longest pushback operation we ever had on my streams, isn't it? Okay, while we are being pushed on to the runway, we can start our, all our fuel pumps and the engine systems back here. Uh, and we're not going to turn the rectifiers and the generators on just now. Okay. Should be all good down there. And now we're just going to wait to be pushed onto the runway, and then we're going to stop the engines. Uh, we should probably turn those lights on. There we go. Lights are on. Get those fans turn on as well. Because why not? I mean, for some reason they're iconic for Antonov aircraft. Okay. Should turn any second now. I mean, I can probably see why we're not allowed to text it on our own. I think uh, we'll probably destroy something with all the thrust we have, even on idle. So, I could see it as a safety reason that we're only allowed to turn on the engines as soon as we're on the runway on the sailboard. Uh, that's an interesting way of pushing us on the runway, though. See that clearance? Uh, okay, there is no clearance left. The aircraft has now fully submerged into the pushback. Or probably the other way around, actually. That's interesting. Okay. Um. It was supposed to push us around until we're actually aligned. What are you doing, pushback? Okay. Guess we'll have to push even a little further. No, absolutely not. Come back here. You are not. You're not done with your job. Come back. Fuck's sake. It's supposed to align us. Ah, come on, come back. You're not done yet. Get back here. Not pushing us. Okay. You know what? Okay. I guess we can straighten ourselves up as soon as we start the engines. Pushback does not want to cooperate here. Start up the engines, one and six. Okay. 
Okay, start them. Yeah. Oh, you can hear them start up. You can just do the base right now. The engine's starting up. It's a real not the way I intended the pushback to be. There we go. Engines one and six are started up. Start up engine number two and four. Okay, there they are. Engines two and four are coming to life. There we go. Temperature's rising. It's looking pretty good so far. That's four of the six engines. So wait for the RPM of the engines to be exact. Yep, there we go. Loading engines number three and four. There we go, engines are starting up. That is the last two engines. That pushback job was still horrible, not gonna lie. Should have straightened us up, but it really just did not. It didn't even try to, I mean, you can just tell. It didn't even try to straighten us up, it just pushed us on here and was like, yeah, my job is done, you're on the wrong way, you can start your engines and freaking straighten up yourself. Looks horrible. <laughs> We should be fine. Okay, the engines are up and running. Um, well, close to up and running. There we go, there they are. So, we can close the engine starter. And get ourselves aligned here. Try to f trying to fix whatever the trick driver just did here to uh, did to us here. Okay, it's aligned with the runway. Accelerate a bit first. There we go. We'll take a flaps 25 because we're not fully loaded today. Or flight. I mean, the runway is on two. Wait, how long is the runway actually? I might have to check that. Because uh, I gotta see what flaps we're taking off with other 25 or 35. I want to turn a bit faster, aircraft. Just a tiny bit faster. Zap, welcome to the stream. Come on, a bit further aircraft, just a bit further. Into a line. There we go. To the wrong one, didn't we? Yeah, never mind. Okay, there we go. Let's do the palm break real quick. So, I'm talking about the gifted sub. Thank you very much for the gifted sub. Um, yeah, we aligned the wrong way, did we? Yeah, okay. Well, are we aligned? We are aligned. 
So I guess we're taking over from zero one now. That was not planned, but okay. Completely forgot about that. To be fair, it might be better though. So, at a set, let's check the um, winds. Two to zero at one five. That should be fine. What is the runway length? A CDA. Check that real quick. The runway has a length of 3,350 meters. Yeah, we're gonna do... It's a full flaps. Yeah, full flaps should be fine. Turn off the abuse back here. And it should turn off any second then. Okay, APUs are coming off. There we go. So, parking brake is disengaged. We're ready for takeoff. Wait, where is my... There's something missing. Why is that thing not turning on? That is addressing. Oh, I know why. We'll probably turn on the energy generator, shouldn't we? There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, so we are ready to take off. Some more run-up tests for the engine. All stable, all six. Take of thrust set. There are two naft down there. The rudder is hypersensitive in this aircraft add on. They have to fix that. They really do. Okay. 100 kilometers an hour check. Rotator slowly. There we go. That is insane. Lightning, welcome to the stream. Look at this massive aircraft. So the flaps are 15. There we go. Keep the aircraft level for now. And then we're gonna do... Let's see, we gotta do direct, I think. Uh, yeah, that is correct. 189. Can't turn on the heading selector again. Doesn't do that, that's interesting. There we go. So heading will be one eighty nine over here. Should be good. Look at that massive aircraft. It's 15. I should probably do flaps 2 already. And flaps up. There we go.
We can do direct, can we? Yeah, we can do direct. It yeah, wants to Darek. Um, I'm not sure if I want to. It's probably a rig roll. Either that or something I don't want to see. What's that? Lever in neutral. Oh yeah, right. Lever down to neutral and locked. Not, I'm not sure about that. Should look at that. As right, so we are fly currently flying the biggest aircraft in the world. Oh, there we go. That is incredible. Any uh, views on this aircraft are really not too great, are they? Well, maybe we'll get some good custom views in the future. That'd be good. We're not at 10,000 yet. I was just gonna check that, but no, we're not. So I gotta wait a bit before we can accelerate a little further. Well, they said that we can't get like any better wing views here. Like that's the best we got probably. It's not gonna get any better than that, is it? Yeah, I just saved them. And now we're getting close to ten thousand feet, so we can probably already turn those lights off here. I think we don't need any win any window heat right now. The weather looks very, very good. Yeah, we're at 10,000 feet. There we go. 500. Oh, by the way, guys, when you're flying this aircraft and you're using the converter, always make sure that as soon as you don't need anymore, go back to the dashboard so you can't ex accidentally click in here because then you can't move the mouse anymore. And if that thing is like out of your sight for whatever reason in that moment, um, you bugged out your camera and can't reset it anymore. So, yeah, really be careful with that. Always go to the dashboard page first or try to, uh, you know, look away from the tablet or iPad, whatever you want to call it. What even is that actually? Self-made as it seems, so... Any builds, pad. That's what we're gonna call it now, it's the any builds pad. We could just go ahead and call it EFB as it is, but you know, that would be a little boring, wouldn't it? We can climb a little faster, actually. I'm a fairly good climber now. I mean, we have to climb up to uh, almost 9,500 meters, which is 31,000 feet, which is still, well, a good bit ahead of us, like 18,000 feet. That should be fine. Pretty happy we got this aircraft in the air so far. The batteries are getting fairly cold, which is good. Are they... Heating up on this mode, by the way, or is that the cooler cooling mode? 
This might be three. Full power mode. I'm gonna put them back down. Because it can actually have the batteries overheated in the aircraft, so you gotta always mirror that. Uh, mirror that. Monitor that. Yeah, I'm gonna mirror my freaking uh, batteries. I did not set my transponder, did I? There we go. I mean, we're not on Vatsum, so we should be fine. But we should definitely fly this aircraft on Vatsum anytime soon. We definitely should, because this is just amazing. Okay, so while we're still on a very good climb, so we don't have to monitor anything right there right now, we're going to put in our ILS for the arrival airport. Um, which army are we going to land at, by the way? One seven. Does that thing have an ILS? Let's hope so. I think it might not. Um, that's not good. Let me copy paste the name of the airport real quick. Um, yeah, okay. That I for doesn't seem to have any ILS, I think. Why is that on French? I don't want French. There we go. That's what I wanted. Um... Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, they won't run me 4,000 meters, but it doesn't seem to have any systems whatsoever. I mean, to be fair, it is an airport that is usually used for, um, like, you know, small props and stuff like that, and not, like, any civil aircraft, or, well, uh, not any commercial aircraft, so that's probably why. Well, I guess we're doing all visual then. Should be fine. Should be fine with that. So no ILS or UR at all. Actually a little worrying, isn't it? I mean the airport is not even on freaking uh Volanta, which is interesting. Yeah, I can't find our Volanta anywhere. I'd like to find the airport on Google Maps real quick so I can try to find on Volanta. Be somewhere over here. I think I can't find it, literally. That's not good, is it? There it is. Wait, I found it. Huh? Why oh, is it not a Volanta, then? It is. It's SLCH on this. Yeah, that is interesting. On Volanta, it is SLCH instead of SLHI. I mean, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? And then we're flying to SLCH, I guess. Okay. It's a really interesting. That is really, really interesting. Let's hope we're still flying to the same airport. Just hope so. Does Simreef... Why did Simreef get it then? And now I'm confused.
What if we put an SLCH on some reef? Still gets it. I think it's exactly the same upward though. Yeah, it seems to be exactly the same upward. It has two Ikea codes apparently. Slightly worrying, but also interesting. So SLCH and SLHI are the exact same waypoints, uh, airports. Some reef gets both of them. Uh, Volanta doesn't. Volanta only has SLCH. It's good to know. And interesting. Was that one of the last flights of the Antonov, by the way? Is there a flight history of the Antonov? I said I'd like to see that might be one of the last flights that we uh, that they did with the Antonov. Ah, uh, no it wasn't, okay. Was not one of the last flights. The last three were from what is it? Somewhere in China to somewhere in uh Kyrgyzstan, and then from Kyrgyzstan to Berlin to Denmark, and then from Denmark to uh, Ukraine, uh, the home airport, and that's where it sadly got destroyed. Which is very, very unfortunate. We're gonna get the vertical speed down now, because we're lo losing speed. So we're just 4,500 feet away from our cruising altitude, so we're very close. Look at this massive aircraft. Isn't that just incredible? I got a screenshot here real quick. Thing is insane. Back in the cabin. Although, well, how's the volume of the aircraft or of the simulator itself? It should be all fine. What's this over here, by the way? I would really like to know what this is. I mean, apparently it doesn't seem to work, so it might not be that important, but I would really like to know what it is. Looks very old. Like, maybe 70s, 80s technology. I mean, this aircraft is out from the 80s, but that looks like... I mean, it could be 80s to 70s technology. Probably 80s. Yeah, I guess we'll not figure that one out in, a, in the near future. Coming closer to a cruising altitude, we still I'm a little too fast apparently, so we can't hold our um speed there. Okay. Let's take a look at our cargo in the bottom. There we go. By the way, this is the um that's a big uh pushback target well, bar that they use for the two two wheels in the front. So, because they have, it has two wheels in the front and needs like a special uh, push bar. And yeah, it's just carrying it around itself. There's a freight, big industrial boiler, 140 tons. Slightly massive, not gonna lie. That's what we have the Zacra for, I guess, to transport stuff like that. I mean, this could probably fit into 747 as well, but well, not even sure if it could. Except for some might not be high enough for that, to be honest. Or maybe the engine of 1 to 4 could probably transport it as well. Or the... What's the other one called? The C5 Galaxy? I mean, isn't the C5 Galaxy, like, uh... 
use efforts only. I think it's not even for commercial freight. It's just about 1,800 feet to go. And then we should be on our cruising altitude. Rinse it by load of cargo. Unload to manually configure. Oh, I see. Okay. That's cool, though. You can't, like, you know, tamp around with this when you have, like, actual cargo loaded in. That's pretty cool. Um, wait. Can we adjust this? No, we can't. That's it. I mean, we can now take a look at the meter of the arrival airport. No, it doesn't even have a meter. Okay. The arrival airport doesn't even have its own meter. That is... Very interesting. What is the next airport? There we go. So, approximately 28 degrees Celsius. Nice. Hundred uh, turn of fifty at five knots, so that should be fairly calm landing, uh, weather like, weather wise. I love this Garmin. I don't know why, it's just somewhat funny to me that we're flying Zeg over the Garmin system. Is our total distance by the way three hundred seventy-two nautical miles? So already getting like. Actually, closer to the uh, send all we like 250 feet, uh, feet, not a gamal term now. It was pretty good. This aircraft is insane. And the fact that it only costs 20 dollars or 20 euros or whatever you use, uh, just insane. And by the way guys, um, if you're thinking about purchasing this aircraft, I would really recommend you guys do it because it's like, um, basically a fundraiser for the act for like rebuilding the real life AN-225 because as we all know it got destroyed in the current Ukrainian-Russian war. And um, yeah, so Anybody's basically uh, set up with Antonov and Asoba Studios, so Microsoft, to get this aircraft add-on out there as good and as quick as possible and then sell it for only $20, um, you know, for, per add-on to uh, basically use the, all that money as a fundraiser towards the rebuild of the actual Antonov. So, like, all the money uh, that you are purchasing or paying for with this aircraft is all being repurposed to rebuild the actual variant uh, after the war at some point, hopefully. Should be leveled off, shouldn't we? Oh, we are leveled off. Never mind. Okay, so we're leveled off at our cruising altitude. That is good. Could actually fly a little faster. There we go. 510. So why not? Actually, no, let's keep it 500. I've heard it looks a little better, doesn't it? Going on a cruising altitude. Does not look like we are because this aircraft is just so massive. Some pretty interesting scenery though, isn't it? And we have like a more GoPro style view. Something like that, that is good. That is a nice view. Actually pretty nice view. So now we get about, yeah, 300, no not 300. 240, 230 miles left until we Descend into the upward. Oh, I just realized I forgot to turn on the music in the background, didn't I? There we go, we should now have some background music. If OBS would recognize the window to be open. Or not. There we go. There's some music. Hopefully.
Yeah, there it is. Oh, by the way, let me show you guys around. So, we don't only have, like, um, the massive cupboard of the Zagreff, which has been operated by six people IRL. We also have, like, a bit of crew space back here. It's so much, but it's a nice detail. And some passenger slash crew space back here. Sadly, we can't go any further, so we can't see, like, the massive electronic rooms that the Zagreff has in real life and stuff like that. But we have, like, a little passenger area here or crew area, crew rest area. Um, kind of sad that the Zagreff doesn't have any, um, uh, like, windows over here. Because that would have been a little nicer. But yeah, so we got a slight bit of cabin, if you're will uh, willing to say so. Um, got one window over here. I'm not even sure what that is there for. And then we can just go down this hatch. And, you know, go into the freight room. Which is just a really, really long room. For our boiler right now. You can actually load, like, a lot of stuff. You can load, um, either three, I think it's a Black Hawk, uh, Black Hawk helicopters, or, uh, two fire trucks, the boiler that we've currently got. So you can just load generic cargo, where you can, like, configure your own weights and stuff. And there's a massive, what is it, wait, eight-wheeler truck, or ten-wheeler, uh, two fire trucks, some magnetic levitation train, three helicopters, the boiler that we have... Oh, that's already it. I mean, that's quite a lot, actually. For it to be just, uh, like, aesthetics, that's pretty nice. Well, I mean, it's not only aesthetics. They have a function, you know, adding weight and stuff. But it's pretty nice. I'm pretty, like, I'm really happy with this add-on. Really, really happy with it. By the way, how long did the pushback really take now? I want to figure that out real quick. That felt like a really long time. <laughs> 15 minutes. Almost 15 minutes. I think it was 10 minutes of pushback. Like 13 maybe. But that was a long time that we took there. I mean, if we have to, you know, push back to the wrong way. I guess that is uh, basically doomed to take a long time. But I'm glad it worked, because, you know, we couldn't pull ourselves for whatever reason, it just the pushback on didn't allow that, so we had to, you know, ah, uh, get pushed instead. I hope this thing gets shark carpet. I want to fly this with like five other people, you know, everyone having their job. One nav one like communicating us awesome vets and the other one navigating the other two monitoring engines and fuel tanks and stuff like that. That'd just be insane. That would just be incredibly insane. I don't really like to see that. The way we could- oh, they're already on standard. But I didn't do that so far. Apparently I did. Actually, no, never mind. This one is not on standard yet. M60. Nice. And, well, what was the arrival thing again? To this airport. Ah, oh, it doesn't even meet our ride. Um, 1022, approximately. 022, so that will be 766. Okay. Good to know. We got a message on our thing here, set course. Or should we set a course? We're literally following the route map right now. I mean, okay. Oh, that's probably when we're flying vectors, isn't it? I mean, fair enough. Fair enough.
back to that view. Nice one. But well, one thing I noticed, which uh, I think is it's a bit sad that you can't really use it, is that you can't, like, you know, use those curtains, uh, close all that stuff up a little, or, like, the sun blinds, stuff like that. Kind of sad. I mean, maybe they add that later on. I doubt it, but maybe. Because that'd be a pretty cool feature, wouldn't it? Just being able to use those. Just, like, small aesthetics, you know? Be pretty nice. And I would really like to know what these two things are. Like, first of all, this one. I mean, that looks like a tracking radar of the 70s or 80s or something. And then this over here, which looks more like, I don't know, some electronic whatever. Maybe flight control system check device, whatever. I mean, something. Or maybe something to monitor the uh, cargo, like the freight. I'm not sure. We should definitely do long haul with this. Now, which day is today? Today's Thursday, isn't it? It's today. Wednesday. Is today month? Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. We should probably do a long haul with this thing on Friday, I'm not gonna lie. Like a nice 12 hour long haul. Who knows, maybe your controls get some shared cockpit files out for this. That'd be pretty neat. Then we could just, you know, do some shared cockpit. Do I have your controls installed? Check real quick. Your controls. I want to see what files they have. I mean, do they even have the A through 10 so far? Because if not, then they will definitely not have the A and 225, I believe. Yeah, they don't even have the uh, A through 10. Yeah, I doubt we'll have any N225 files till Friday. Yeah, probably not. Okay. Would have been nice though. We'll see, I guess. We'll see. The way we can put that back to zero so we don't forget about that. That zero? That should be zero. Let me actually f check flights on Dotio real quick if they're around you. I actually did check earlier, never mind. Now just 278 nautical miles left, so we're going to descend in about 150. We're getting there already. And that's like 20 minutes remaining maybe? It's pretty quick, isn't it? And probably about 20 minutes till we can descend. Maybe even a little less. Something like 18, 17 minutes.
I don't know why, but when you're like just staring at the glare shield, looking out the window of this aircraft, it really does feel like you're flying the biggest aircraft in the world, but as soon as you go to the outside view, you know you're flying the biggest aircraft of the world. Well, actually second biggest now. Um, theoretically speaking, it's not the biggest aircraft anymore. For a while. It's, it's probably the biggest normal, like to some standards, normal aircraft. It's the current biggest would theoretically be the Strato launch uh, by... Is it Virgin Galactic? I'm not even sure. But it has like 120 meters uh, of like uh, wingspan, so wingspan of 120. That's like, I don't know, 350, 370 feet. Just incredible. realize because I have to land this aircraft do we? I'm not that good with landing the aircraft so far. That would be an interesting one. I'm not bad either but like it just feels a little weird. I really hope though that any builds will like update the rudder and nose wheel steering and like the trim, trim sensitivity because all those flight controls are like extremely sensitive in this aircraft which just does not make it a, fun, uh, a lot of fun to you know uh, taxi or take off and land uh, when you have especially when you have winds it's not that much fun it's just like incredibly sensitive especially the trim the trim is probably the worst. Because the trim is just like, you re if you just try to really, really slightly adjust it, you're already going to mess it up because you're over going to over trim it. And yeah, I'm not too happy about that, to be honest. I hope we'll be fine on today's landing because, you know, we've got some very calm weather. So we shouldn't worry about the trim all that much. Yeah, how far we were from a descent? About 110, 115 miles. So, like another 10 minutes till we can descend. It's a really short flight, isn't it? The fact that they dis did this flight in real life just shows how incredibly difficult it seems to be to get like a hundred and whatever, I think about 150 tons of generators that they, um, 
uh, actually delivered in real life, I think it was uh, Siemens generators or something. And they were like 150 tons. And just shows like how difficult it is to get those kind of like, you know, uh, things around the world. You need like the biggest aircraft in the world to get that, uh, you know, delivered. I'm not even sure what that thing was for. I'm not even sure if it was a generator. It was just something from Siemens, and I think it might have been a generator. Guys, I'm getting a call. I'll be right back.
3, vamos.